Hello and welcome. You are listening to an informed take on current events brought to you by law students and staff of Queen's University Belfast. This is LawPod. Good afternoon, everybody. I am Megan Ang Ziming. Today with me, I have Yusur Dalul, founder of The Law Space. I'm also a paralegal for a American firm called Ogletree Deacons. And at the same time, I part-time teach yoga and meditation. So today we're going to go to a lot of deep topics about the paralegal role, a bit about well-being and work-life balance, and hopefully you are equally as excited as both of us. Yeah. So without further ado, let's get started. So what is exactly the law space and what did you have in mind when you established it? So I established the law space back in October 2020. And the reason why the law space came about was whenever I was just starting out my master's um, in September 2020, it came to me the fact that like, you know, this is such a horrible time for a first year student to be starting university during the pandemic because you don't have the opportunities to socialize, network, put yourself out there as back in the regular days, you would have had those experiences and opportunities to do so. So it just came about that, you know what, why not we start a online platform where I can bring on speakers from all different types of legal fields, specialties, and even if they have pursued the legal field and decided to leave, it would be great to see their perspective as to why they wanted to change and what was best for them. So all these different experts in these fields to just come on to the law space and talk about their journeys, their experiences, their pathways, successes and failures. And from then on, you'll get to learn as to how you can go about your legal journey at university, after university. So it's not only directed towards legal students, but also professionals in the legal field, whether you're just starting out as a paralegal, legal analyst, professional, whatever it may be, you have someone to look up to and hear about their failures and their successes and and know that it's not the end of the world if you you don't pass this exam. Everything happens for a reason and everyone has a different pathway, a different route, a different story. And it it can be so easy to get caught up and, you know, the realization that this person successfully got a training contract after university or this person successfully got a job. Yeah, for sure. Peer pressure in this sense. Exactly. Exactly. So that's why it's great to hear from others. Mm -hmm. And I've also had the opportunity to have some speakers on the law space to teach about certain types of skill sets, whether Mm -hmm. that may be confidence building, teamwork building, communication, learning more about the imposter syndrome, because it can be so easy to get caught into the mindset, you know, I'm not good enough for this job or I'm not good enough for this degree or opportunity. So especially if you are around so many people that are trying to pursue the exact same goal. I've personally attended quite a lot of the law space events and I learned so much more about what is contained within the legal industry and what you can actually do after having a law degree. It doesn't have to be barrister or solicitor. There's very traditional routes, but there's a lot of other options. Mm -hmm. And I think you had once this speaker who talked about Barbary and the American um, bar exam, which talks about qualification transfers and things like that. So that, again, opens up more opportunities and, you know, acknowledge the fact that you actually have more than one route and you have more than one country to go. That's why I try to have a various amount of speakers, a various amount of topics on the law space for students to hear because a lot of students may realize that I would prefer to go study in the US or I'd rather go try to travel abroad experience elsewhere in Europe. So there are different types of opportunities that you can pursue and it doesn't necessarily have to be subjected to one jurisdiction or one country. It's also a good opportunity to build network and professional connections. 100%. In all my talks, I always, always encourage the students on the talk to connect with each other on LinkedIn, add each other on whether it's Instagram, Facebook, any types of socials. You know, you never know what type of connection you might make there. Um, If you ask for a helping hand, that person may be just for you. So always... if. There's one piece of advice or one tip that I could always give is never be afraid to ask questions. Never be afraid to put yourself out there. You know, if you never do, you're never going to learn. You're never going to fail. And then from those failures, that's when you learn how to become a better person and get on top of your game. 
So being a master student and someone who runs her own platform, how do you find the balance in the workload? And more importantly, how have you managed to maintain that? Because I know that you're quite a busy person. Yes. So honestly, I loved pursuing a postgraduate degree. At first, I thought it was going to be a bit difficult, especially given the circumstances that we were in back in September 2020 to 2021. It was quite difficult getting around the fact that we're not having our classes in person. Everything was online, especially making connections in class, making friends in class. It was quite difficult to do that. But what was great about Queen's specifically is that they did keep their graduate school open, the library open, and then a lot of us would have met up in those facilities and we would have discussed our courseworks, our assignments, lessons, all the stuff that was in relation to that specific degree. And whenever you are pursuing a postgraduate degree, it is very much independent focused. So it's based on your own type of research, your effort in, into putting the time for the coursework, assignments, essay. And what I loved specifically about our postgraduate is that it was very much essay based rather than exam based. And I love, love, love writing. Even in my yoga classes that I teach part time, I love to write poems and I love to even share those poems with my students. So writing was just a fantastic part into implementing that aspect of pursuing a postgraduate degree. I think starting the law space during October 2020, while we were in the midst of a pandemic as well, in a lockdown, I couldn't have found a perfect time to start such a platform. And it also gave me time to also pursue the yoga field more seriously as well. And that is one of the reasons why I am so passionate about it is because you can get so caught up in the fact that I need to get this submitted. I need to make sure I pleasing this person or my employ my employer, or whatever, like all that kind of stuff. But you know, you also need to put your mental health first always, every single day, especially within the corporate field or any type of work field that you are in. It's so, so important for you to take care of your mental health. And one of the like great ways that you can do that is by pursuing yoga, meditation, breath work, taking care of what you eat, what you consume, how you take care of your time. It's good to know that yoga has brought you a lot of peace and has promoted and encouraged your mental health, which is very nice to hear. And you've talked a little bit about talking to different speakers and the different routes. So I would like to go into more details. So what has speaking to the different lawyers working in different fields and different legal areas taught you? Honestly, it has taught me so, so, so much. If you are brought up with the sense of this is a traditional way of pursuing a, the legal routes after you finish university, you have to get a training contract or a pupillage, go for the, either the solicitor route, the barrister route, and you may do that first and it is okay to realize maybe I want to pursue something else in the legal field and you have so many other different types of jobs you have solicitors barristers work in the government you might work as a professional a paralegal as a teacher a professor a supervisor I think it's fantastic that your options aren't limited and what's great about pursuing a legal deg degree as well is that it covers so many different types of social issues as well so you can always pursue humanitarian work non-profit work as well which is fantastic which is beautiful like, you know during my second year at university at Queen's we went to South Africa for a human rights project and it's honestly so so beautiful so fulfilling how you can give legal aid to individuals who need it the most but can't afford it. Also, whenever I was at university, I was very proactive with joining different types of societies. I was a part of the debating society. I went to, to all the debates on Thursday nights and even participated in, in a lot of them as well. And I was a part of the law society in third year. I was the head charity officer and we got to do different events and activities. And we had one for the law society at the Children's Law Centre in Northern Ireland, which was a beautiful event and we raised a lot of money for a really great cause and I was also a part of the Mooding Society but then it also made me realize that I prefer ADR a bit more. I really really like public speaking and I'm, I might like that more within a negotiating sense you know trying to settle a deal or negotiate both sides and then find a compromise and know that we can both make this work. So if there is one thing I would say especially as a student or if you're in your first year or second year definitely definitely put yourself out there. Join as many different types of events, societies, workshops that your university has to offer or even outside of university. Because even if you don't like it at first, at least now you know, I'm not really a fan of this. Mm -hmm. And it's giving me the opportunity to kind of pursue something else in a more serious matter. 
Thank you so much for sharing your experience about that. It's also rewarding to know that you've managed to provide advice using what you've learned in law school in the yes. South Africa project. Yes. Yes. No, 100%. We did get some training from the organization that we were working with at the time for the Law Society and for this project to let us know how you can approach these clients, how you can talk to them in a respectful manner and be understanding about their situation and then how we could take their experiences and what they're asking for help for to cut that down on paper and then approach a lawyer who does have the expertise to actually give out the legal advice and help them and guide them as to what they can do next. I think it was definitely one of the reasons why I decided to pursue a human rights legal master's as well. It doesn't necessarily mean that I have to work within the human rights field, but I just always know that I have a huge, huge passion for human rights, volunteering and helping those on the side. I think one thing that's important to know is that even if you pursue a degree that's completely irrelevant to the legal field, there are certain skills that you can take from that degree and use that for the job that you're applying for, whether it's research or keeping yourself open to different types of arguments, sides, how you approach other people, making relationships with others. Indeed, yes. Yeah. So don't be discouraged if you're not studying a law degree. No, because, not at all. Yeah, because yeah. honestly, the options are open. And just to reiterate, the XQE course, the Solicitor's Qualifying Exam, is also open to non-law students. So you yes. now start to see that, you know, law systems or law schools are starting to accept different types of degree holders and different types of people with different types of backgrounds. So that, again, is a very good scene that we're seeing in the legal field, more diversity. Yes. And it's more encouraging to new bloods. Yes. You yeah. touched on LLM yeah. and what made you pursue LLM masters in human rights. Being an LLM graduate in terms of the content delivery, how you learn things and the overall writing approach, how, how would the LLM program differ from the LLB undergraduate degree? Yeah, so there are definitely a couple of things I could say about this. Within the bachelor's degree, especially within those first two years, you're told these are the topics that you'll be studying until your third year. You have more leeway to pick the topics that you'll be more interested in to explore and discover. And that also comes in with your dissertation, which is fantastic because you get to pick a topic about literally anything that you'd like to write up, as long as it's legal related. And you get to explore that as well. So I definitely enjoy my third year at university within the bachelor's degree. And it made me think I actually would like to pursue a master's because I love writing, researching, and especially if it's research within an area that I feel like I could just talk ages and ages on. One of the differences is that in your bachelor's degree, it's very much exam based. Most of our assignments would have exams in them and then you'd have essays here and there. Whereas a master's, specifically a legal master's, most of your assignments are essay based and coursework based, which is really great for those who like to write. It gives you that opportunity to dive deeper into that field that you'd want to learn more about, expose yourself more into. And it's fantastic for those who would like to per possibly pursue even like a PhD in the future. With this LLM degree, do you think it has impacted your career prospects and how you go about your work on a daily basis? My LLM degree specifically, it's human rights based, but I learned so much from it. And I was able to take a lot of what I learned throughout my human rights degree into the legal corporate field that I'm working in right now. I would say definitely a legal master's has helped me in the sense uh, when it came to research and focusing on my coursework, but it also taught me a lot of skills as to how I can deal with people in my course, like people that I could look up to for help, whether it was my professors or my supervisors. It really made me realize I need to open up my awareness because there's so much more than the field that I'm approaching. So many things may pop up as you go along your legal degree and your current job that can make you realize maybe I want to do something else or maybe I'd like to dive deeper into this field. You're never restricted to choice and you have a lot available. So that's why it's fantastic to have different degrees and different you know, courses or workshops that you can approach and also realize this is what I like and this is what I don't. It's actually very yeah. nice to know that an LLM master's actually brings you not only a bunch of transferable legal knowledge, but also yes. transferable skills that you can apply 100%. when communicating or building interpersonal skills. Or team people. building mm. as well. You know, there's so many skills that you can learn from a master's. 
That's very, very good. So, would you mind to tell me what does a day in the life of a paralegal look like? Yes, of course. Obviously, other paralegals' jobs might look a bit different than to what my job is on a day-to-day basis with other firms, but. With the firm that I am working for, Ogletree Deacons, a fantastic firm. Honestly, I couldn't have asked for a better firm to start as a fresh graduate. So honestly, I am really grateful for the opportunity that they gave me to work for them as a paralegal. What my job is that we draft cases for the big investment companies, investment investment firms, Fortune 500 companies, like really big names that you would be very fam- like familiar with. I work underneath the immigration department as an immigration paralegal. And basically what these clients are looking to do is that they're looking to reposition their employees from all over, all over the world into the US. So Ogletree Deacons is an American firm and that's why we mainly focus on American immigration matters, but we're also internationally based. We have a lot of offices in Europe and all over the US, Canada, Mexico, and they recently they just recently opened up their office here in Belfast, but they also have offices in London, Berlin, Paris. So it's quite quite international, quite diverse. We work with attorneys from all over the US who are managing our cases. This job really is very client focused. So you really want to meet the expectations and the needs of the client and the needs of the attorney as well. Given the opportunity that we've been able to come into the office twice a week now, which is fantastic, or even whenever we would like to come in and let them know just in advance that we'd like to work from the office, you're being exposed to your co-workers and your teammates as well. It really does build on your team build skills, attention to detail, your communication skills, understanding how everyone has a different approach to their work and how each client has different expectations as well. So you have to approach all these different types of cases in different ways. At the end of the day, all these employees that are looking to reposition themselves back into the U.S. or into the U.S. to start a new job, a new life, a new chapter, they're putting their faith and trust in you as a paralegal, as a future lawyer, as an attorney, as a case manager. I feel this route or this paralegal role has laid a very steady and a very solid foundation for your career pathway. Uh, for 100%. Your future career pathway, sorry. Yeah. 100%. And I would also give thanks to my legal degrees. The bachelor's degree and the master's degree really, really helped me, especially with the time that I put in outside of studying the extracurriculars and all the societies that I was a part of and the trips. It definitely helped me gain those skills. And I can see those skills shining through whenever I am working at that desk nine to five working with those clients, working with the attorneys. So indeed, no experiences go to waste. I feel like everything shines through and a takeaway is always a takeaway. And so a conglomeration of experiences of what you're doing, yoga, your degree, and what you're doing right now for your career. Where do you see yourself in a few years time? Where do I see myself in the future? So right now within the legal field and my legal job, I am honestly so pleased and so happy with the team and the firm that I'm working for. They are a fantastic, fantastic firm. Honestly, I couldn't stress this enough because the people that I'm working with are great, great people. And it has me really excited for what's to come next in my legal like journey, in my legal career. Right now, I do intend to qualify. Yes, no set plans for that right now. But it's definitely a goal of mine to, to qualify and actually put my legal knowledge and work and experience into practice, which will be great, and being able to properly advise people in the future and have that qualification to do so with regards to the law space. So we are moving from being online and hosting our talks online to having talks in person, which will be fantastic. And each time it'll be a different speaker, a different topic, a different theme. And it'll also give you the opportunity to network and connect with other legal students, legal professionals and the speakers themselves and always look up to them for any sort of help that you might need in the future. So I'm really, really excited to announce that very soon with the law space. I have been a bit quiet on the law space just because sometimes you need to disconnect, to reconnect with others as well and realize what's the next big step. So this is also another tip I would say is that if you ever need to kind of take a step back and then realize, hmm, take a moment of reflection there and think, what's my next step? And that's exactly how I felt with the law space is the fact that I know that I want to continue on growing it. A lot of people are interested and they ask, 
for all these different types of talks. With regards to the yoga sphere, it's definitely something that I will 100% continue for the future. And it's something I definitely want to introduce into the corporate field, into the educational field, and specifically for legal students, because not going to lie, our degrees are stressful, our jobs are stressful. It only really makes sense that once you start taking care of your well-being, your health, your mental health, your physical well-being, that you'll be able to show up for your work, for your tasks, for your duties in a healthier way, in a way that you're more productive and ready to give all you got. And I'm happy to say that I've already given classes to institute students here in Northern Ireland who are already on their way to qualifying as a solicitor or a barrister, and they find it so helpful for them when it comes to approaching their studies and their work. To see that expansion of the blossoming of yoga within the legal field, and obviously it's always important to raise awareness because, honestly, if you don't have that well-being aspect or if you don't have that recharging ability you don't really have the energy to keep providing for your clients to keep providing in this legal community so again very amazing thing that you're doing always always very excited to see what you have for the future thank you you so so much much. thank you so much for giving so many advice and sharing so many amazing tips and your insights thank you so much thank you so much for having me thank you you have been listening to law pod an informed take on current events brought to you by the law students and staff at queen's university belfast Law Pod is funded by the Queen's University Law School. Follow us on Twitter at QUB Law Pod. For more information, you can also visit our website, lawpod.org, and please have a look in the show notes for more information about the topics covered today. You can find us on iTunes or anywhere else you get your podcasts. Thank you for listening.